Nintendo Star Fox Zero by Platinum Games is an arcade-like vehicle shooter with missions varying between on-rails to open all-range combat. The game is very short, but that's expected since Star Fox is a series known for its replayability. It accomplishes this by utilizing classic arcade game design, focusing on high scores, best times, finding all the secrets, and adding five often hidden collectible medals per level. Even with all that, I haven't even mentioned the various branching levels and story paths in the game. The game features 20 levels for you to carve your path to the endgame. Star Fox Zero is a reimagining of the classic Star Fox 64, or Lilat Wars in Europe. Sadly, this game was a justification for the Wii U gamepad, instead of the Nintendo love letter we were all hoping for. But in that regard, it actually did a lot right. But it also got a lot wrong too. The Wii U gamepad has most of the game's sound, including your laser fire, bombs, vehicle noises, and all in-game voices, which I actually think is a fun immersive feature that helps you feel like you're inside your ship. Music seems to be most of what you'll hear from your TV, with the exception of a few faint sound effects. The game does feature motion controls, and it's one of the most disputed things about Star Fox Zero. Out of the many times I was told you can turn them off, you can't. Many boss encounters lock the TV camera pointing at the boss. Flying while watching the TV in this view is nearly impossible, and you can't see where you're going at many angles. The only way to function at these parts is to fully embrace the motion controls and the bottom screen to see where you're going. While you can turn off the constant motion controls, there will always be some motion controls. For example, with them on, your aim is always controlled by tilting the gamepad, but toggling the motion control setting you will change this to only trigger when pressing or holding your fire button. I personally enjoyed this setting. While the motion controls would still mess up at times, you can always recalibrate them with a quick click of the left stick or by hitting the Y button. Motion controls overall feel okay, but they definitely took a bit of getting used to. That being said, with much of the aiming being done on the Wii U gamepad, looking up and down from the gamepad to screen did feel like a bit of a chore at times. My twin brother and I actually found that playing co-op mode was a lot of fun and takes some of the stress off of learning the controls. With one person controlling the vehicle and the other focusing on the gamepad and motion control aiming, the game feels a lot easier. If you're worried about a challenge, you can always use the Falco Amiibo to give yourself a black R-Wing that does double damage but takes double damage as well. The game features multiple vehicles in it. Personally, I enjoyed the concept of adding new vehicles to the mix, but that being said, some vehicles such as the Gyro Wing have problems in the game. The game's helicopter-like vehicle, the Gyro Wing, is functional but can move a bit slow at times, and this makes the missions tedious, anticlimactic, and many times a straight-up buzzkill. The Walker, or Chicken Walker as many call it, can be difficult to use in many situations. While it was made to have better maneuverability in tight spaces, I often found myself stumbling with the controls and smashing into walls after many playthroughs of the game. And honestly, it had very little to do with the motion controls, and more to do with the left stick constantly propelling the vehicle forward anytime you tapped it, even pushing left or right. I'll keep practicing, but it's definitely the hardest to get the hang of. The tank felt very familiar to the tank in Star Fox 64, and I can honestly say the motion controls work pretty well with it. Music seemed to be hit or miss in my opinion. The end credits have a really bad remix, while other songs are very familiar and have great remixes. Star Fox is one of my favorite series of all time, so I was very excited when this game was getting released. At its core, the on-rail missions and all range mode dogfights are where the game truly shines. Battling Star Wolf, large bosses, or simply a wide space of enemies gave me the excitement that the classic Star Fox 64 was known for. In Star Fox Zero, the voice acting in the game is cheesy, but familiar and honestly brings a smile to my face. The branching paths, hidden secrets, and collectibles will keep me coming back for a while. But sadly, I can't get myself to recommend the game. As much as fans have been begging for a new Star Fox, myself included, this game just wasn't very satisfying. I couldn't shake this feeling of, man, I wish I was playing Star Fox 64. The game seems to have its high moments and its lows, but overall this game feels average. With all that being said, I couldn't be happier to see Star Fox, one of my favorite series of all time, getting some attention. Let's just hope this rocky game doesn't discourage Nintendo from making more in the series in the future.
Well, those were my thoughts on Star Fox Zero, and I did want to thank you for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, hey, maybe hit the like, even the subscribe. Also, my twin brother and I run a Twitch show that we do every week. Check it out at twitch.tv slash gamingtwinshow.